Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us again. You're with the CBC Morning News, and I'm Henry Champ. Hi, I'm Norma Lee McLeod. There's more shelling around uh, Sarajevo this morning. But at the same time, there is some hope that the stalled peace talks may soon resume. We're going to update the search for an end to the fighting. That's coming up in the next 15 minutes. But first, the news. Just three days after U.S. President Bill Clinton ordered new security measures in Washington, there's been another serious incident on the grounds of the White House. Overnight, a man with a gun climbed a three-meter fence and ran across the White House lawn. Secret Service agents ordered him to stop. When he didn't, he was shot and wounded. The agent who struggled with the man was also hurt. Officials now say the man's gun wasn't loaded. Police have identified the intruder as 37-year-old Leland Majeski of Virginia. Officials say he managed to get within 30 meters of the White House. He'll likely be charged later today with trespassing at the White House and carrying a weapon. This is just the latest in a series of alarming incidents at the White House. In September, a light plane crashed on the White House lawn. A month later, Francisco Duran fired 29 rounds at the building with a rifle. After all of that, Clinton approved a permanent security crackdown on the streets around the White House, and last weekend, the Secret Service shut down part of Pennsylvania Avenue and part of the road to the south of the building. Heavy shelling broke out again today around the Bosnian capital of Sarajevo. At least two people were killed. It started early this morning when mortar bombs slammed into a hillside south of the city. Houses were set on fire and families forced to run for their lives. Thirteen people were injured in the shelling, including a three-year-old child. A general alert was issued in the city center and people quickly cleared the streets. At one point, canisters containing some kind of gas landed in the downtown area. Bosnian government officials say it was nerve gas fired by the Serbs, uh, but that hasn't been confirmed. And a car bomb exploded this morning outside the hotel, a hotel in Lima, Peru, killing four people and wounding at least 15 others. The bomb went off at around 4.30 in front of the hotel casino on the ground floor. Peruvian uh, news reports uh, say as much as 100 kilograms of explosives were inside the car. Police suspect Shining Path guerrillas are behind that attack. And in Canada, the cost of living is creeping up. In April, the annual inflation rate rose to 2.5 percent. That's up from 2.2 percent in March and 1.8 percent in February. The jump in prices in April was the highest since December of 1991, and those hikes were widespread. The cost of fresh vegetables rose more than 22 percent. Gasoline prices were up 9 percent, and higher interest rates pushed up the cost of a mortgage by about 5 percent. Today, jurors in the Paul Bernardo trial will hear more about the night Leslie Mahaffey disappeared almost four years ago. Yesterday, one of her friends told the court that Mahaffey spent several hours at an informal wake with about 100 other teenagers. Martin McSweeney said he walked Mahaffey home at about 2 in the morning. The door was locked, but she said that she would be okay, and McSweeney left. Next, the jury heard videotape testimony from Mahaffey's best friend, Amanda Carpino. She testified that Mahaffey had called her home asking for a ride and a place to stay. When Carpino said that wasn't possible, Mahaffey said she would go home. The Crown believes Mahaffey disappeared a short time later. Paul Bernardo is charged with her abduction, rape and murder. He's also charged in the kidnapping and murder of Kristen French a year later. He has pled not guilty to all of those charges. And Saskatchewan Premier Roy Romano will outline his platform today for the provincial election. Romano called the election last night for June 21st. Romano didn't have to face uh, provincial voters until next year, but he told supporters he's fulfilled his first mandate by eliminating the deficit. Romano accomplished that by raising taxes and shutting down dozens of rural hospitals. But his NDP government is still popular. A recent CBC Angus Reid poll put NDP support at 51% among decided voters. The Liberals had 30% and the Conservatives 13%. And the public inquiry into the Somalia affair holds its first hearing today in Ottawa. The inquiry is looking into the events surrounding the beating death of a Somali teenager who was in Canadian custody. It will also take a broader look at the now disbanded Canadian Airborne Regiment and its participation in the UN mission in Somalia. The inquiry is not expected to hear testimony for several weeks. Today, panel members will begin dealing with preliminary legal arguments. 
And that is the news. The time is 22 minutes to the hour. And it's happened again at the Sky Dome. Oh, what happened? A couple oh. forgot to close the blinds. Forgot. forgot. You're kidding. You're yeah, kidding. just above the jumbotron. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, anyone with binoculars had. Uh, well, I mean, would a would a fan go without view? binoculars? Obviously, there's a question. I don't know. There, it's funny because I watched a good portion of that. Game, I think. <laughs> you didn't I, see it. I didn't. I certainly didn't see it. <laughs> good. There were uh, three or four home runs in the park. I guess there were a couple of home runs somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> guess so. Cito said that the team didn't really notice uh, any of the action going on. He said they were too interested in winning the ball game. He said, had it gone into extra innings, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> the game. Anyway, let's have a look and uh, see how things are today across the country. We're expecting a little bit of sunshine breaking loose in Newfoundland today, 15 or 16 degrees, just variable skies. This looks a little nastier than it actually is going to be. We're just seeing very scattered showers through New Brunswick and PEI. Uh, Nova Scotia, some variable skies and warm in the Maritimes. 21 in Montreal today, chance of a thunder shower. And in through the southern sections of Ontario, we're looking at light rain. Possibility of thunder showers ranging from Toronto through the Ottawa Valley, variable skies to the northwest. And Across the prairies today, nice weather, highs around 16, a little below the seasonal values, I suppose. We get into British Columbia, though, where the jet stream comes dipping down this way, and we start seeing some of the warmer air coming up from the south. You see the difference in the temperatures here. We've got uh, upwards of uh, 10 degrees separation here just across the mountains. Uh, 22 degrees for a high in Vancouver. Yukon is looking at good weather as well, uh, 19 or 20. We have some sunshine in through the Mackenzie Delta Great Slave District, mostly cloudy in the east and still kind of cool there between 1 and 3 for highs. That's the national weather picture coast to coast to coast. of questions and still no answers about the fate of the Winnipeg Jets and the Quebec Nordique. The Jets were supposed to hold a news conference yesterday with details of their bailout plan, but the news conference was scrapped because all sides were still talking. There is still time, though. The group trying to keep the Jets in Winnipeg has until August 15th now to raise the rest of the money they need. That's about $30 million. Meanwhile, in Quebec, Nordique President Marcel Bou postponed his scheduled meeting with Quebec Premier Jacques Parizeau. They will meet on Thursday instead. Now on the ice, it was the Western Conference semifinals with the Canucks in Chicago for Game 2 of their series. And Jeremy Roenick back on the ice for the Hawks. His first game since having knee surgery. And the Blackhawks strike first. But it's not until 14 minutes past Kirk McLean. That's all the Hawks need. And what would a playoff game be without a controversial goal? Canucks appear to tie it on that shot by Pavel Bure, but Trevor Linden gets caught with his skate in the crease. Here's the insurance marker for Chicago third period. Dirk Graham to Patrick Poulin. Chicago blanks Vancouver 2-0. Chicago leads the series two games to none. The next two games are in Vancouver Thursday night and Saturday afternoon with Jeremy Roenick saying it feels great to be back. You know, this, this was a big big moment for me. I was, uh, I was very emotional at the beginning of the game and to be back in front of my fans and, you know, I, I, I can't uh, express the feelings that I had when I first got on the ice and, and the people welcomed me back and, and showed me that I, that I really belonged here and that's something that I'll never forget and something that uh, I'll feel like I owe them for forever. In Detroit, the Red Wings scored their second straight route right over San Jose. Paul Coffey's goal starts a four-goal outburst in the first period. Sergei Fedorov follows that up with his first of two as Detroit beat San Jose 6-2. The Wings leading that series 2-0. The series will shift to San Jose next for games on Thursday and Saturday nights. Now, both Eastern Conference semifinals are on the schedule today. The Flyers take their 2-0 lead into New York to play the Rangers. And the Penguins are in New Jersey to play the Devils. That series is tied at one win each. Incidentally, Pittsburgh's Ulf Samuelson is expected to miss the next two games with a couple of bruised ribs. On to baseball now with the Padres and the Expos and how's this first inning Mike Lansing with the grand slam home run for Montreal. Moise Alou also homered for the Expos and they're helped out on the mound by Jeff Facero. He collects his fifth win. He's the first five-game winner in the National League this year. 